Gallop, it's your turn next, babe. <laughs> we gotta get your retinas done. Okay, so today is October 10th, which is World Sight Day, and ironically, I'm going to Sick Kids Hospital for my eye appointment with my ophthalmologist, Dr. Elise Eon, who you guys Continue met back in January. Kilometer. So I'll link that video below. We had like a nice little chit chat, it was really fun. And when we were chatting, she was like, when was your last appointment? Living in America, have you been going to an eye doctor? And I was like, mm. It's definitely been like over three years since my last checkup, which is not good. Don't follow in my footsteps. I should be going more often. So today I'm finally going. Actually, the last time I had a checkup, I made a video about it. So I'll link that below. It was like my what I really see video. So if you want to know what I see, that's the video for you. But today I'm going to try to vlog an appointment so you guys can see like how they check my eyes and just like the process that my specialist goes through to check up on my, my little retinas, my little diseased retinas. So let's go to sick kids. I made it to the ophthalmology department. We wanted to go get Starbucks and or Tim Hortons. We kind of want both. We're only here for a little bit, okay? But we don't have time. My first test is supposed to be at 11. So we just checked in, got my, my bracelet and I'm having a couple of images, a scan. You're gonna have to put drops in and then I don't see my actual doctor until one. So I have tests from 11 to one and then my doctor comes and like gives me the update in the little chit chat. So I'm gonna try to get as much as I can, but obviously for people's privacy sake, I don't wanna get, you know, other kids and their families because most people here are children. Usually you age out at 18, but because my disease is so rare, I get to stay at sick kids. I'm like the big kid and there's like a ton of actual children like I used to be. I've been coming here for 25 years, you guys. I've been coming since I was six months old. So I used to be one of the cute little kids and now I'm just like the old lady with purple hair and a cute dog. At least I have him. So yeah, I will do as much as I can, but for whatever I can't get, I'll just give you like a recap once I'm back at my parents' place and like tell you what you might've missed. Fill in the gaps. But let's go sit and wait for my first scan. So I am about to get my eyes dilated. Are we freezing and dilating? Yes, two dilating drops after the freezing drop. Okay, I know this is unusual. I know most people you like pull it down and drop them in. Do you mind like putting them in the corners of my eye and I can blink them? Yeah, in? that's fine. Okay, thank you. Do you, you. want to lean back? Yeah. And, like, and do you want me to have the chair lean back? As oh, well? can it? Yeah. That would be really helpful. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at this. I don't I feel like I didn't do this when I was younger. Is that okay? Oh, Eagle? this is perfect. Yes. All right, so I'll put the freezing drop first in each one. Okay. All right. Stinging. How long does it take to freeze? It should be a few seconds at the very most. Okay. And some patients do need more than one drop, depending on how sensitive your eyes are. So let's try the dilating drops. They should not hurt if that one drop was enough. Okay. I feel like I'm going to need two. Okay. Do you want to put two just Yeah, in let's okay. just do two. All right, perfect. I'd rather be okay. super frozen than not. When I was younger and coming for appointments, the only person I would let do drops was my dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm a big girl. I can do it on my own. Will it be two at once? Uh, no. So I'm gonna wait a few seconds after you take a blink. Yeah, I'm definitely frozen. I can feel my eyes feel funny. <laughs> Ready for the next one? Ready. Alright. How long will it take to dilate? It should take no more than 20 minutes, but we're gonna have you basically adjust to the dark for 40 minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna go sit in a dark room for 40 minutes? Yes. Is my mom allowed to bring me Starbucks? Yeah, she is. So the first test is FF? FST. And that'll take an hour and a half? An hour at in total. And then we're not doing the ERG because of the silver. No, I don't want to risk that. Ah, the sterling silver allergy got me out of a test. <laughs> <laughs> that, that allergy has never come in handy before today, but there we go. Thank you. So somebody is now going to explain the test to me that I'm going to have done. So we're in a dark room or a room that will be dark. Mm -hmm. So for the first 45 minutes, you're just going to be sitting, hanging out in the dark with eye patches on. So the idea is to get your eyes super, super adjusted to the dark. Once the 45 minutes are up, I'll invite Form you to remove the eye patch from your right eye and then have yourself positioned with your chin on the little resting area here right. and looking right into the bowl and so in the bowl there's going to be a flash so before the flash you're going to hear a beep just to cue you in that there may or may not have been a flash because we're looking at what flash you are most sensitive to in the dark so what is the dimmest flash that you can see and so so we'll keep getting dimmer as yeah, so the test is kind of um, set up in a way that it's it's very automatic, so it's going to adjust 
to what you're responding to. And so for your response, you have to enter if you see the flash or don't see the flash. So that's with a button box. So left button is no, you don't see the flash. Right button with the texture is that you do see it. Okay. So you're going to hear a high pitched beep and you are required within fairly adequate amount of time to enter if you do see the flash or don't see it. Okay. Try to be as truthful as possible. And we're gonna do each flash intensity or each run of colors at least twice, just to make sure that your responses are reliable. And it's blue, red, and white. Yes. Basically the test, you're gonna be seeing a roughly 60 flashes on average, just until we get a really good threshold response and you do each one twice. If there is too much variability between responses, so maybe if you're too tired for the first few and your responses or your intensities are a little bit different, I'll have you just do it once again. So you're looking at the extra two minutes at max okay. for each test run. I haven't worn an eye patch since I was really little. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna have both eyes patched. Great. So you can close your eyes, that'll be most comfortable. Okay, so that's one. Remember doing this every day? Mm -hmm. Yeah, every day. All right, and let's do the other eyes. So perfect. Oh, don't be taking off Molly's eyebrows. <laughs> oh my god. They will, they will still be there. <laughs> Wouldn't that be devastating? <laughs> all right, so I'll start my timer. I'm going to close all the lights, and I'll have a red light on in the dark in the meantime, so there's some light. But once I actually start the test, I'll actually turn this light off, so it's completely dark. Since I'm waiting here for 40 minutes, am I allowed to listen to an audiobook? Yes, of course. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And you guys can chit-chat if you want to take a nap. That's totally fine, too. Okay. All right. <laughs> thank you. So you guys probably can't see anything because this room is dark. <laughs> so we're in the same boat now. So mom just went and grabbed me a Starbucks. I got a grande soy green tea latte with no foam. Green tea lattes are so much better at Starbucks in Canada because they don't over-sweeten it, right, mom? Oh yeah, just love getting There's such here. a treat here. I was dreaming about it last night. Yeah, me too. And she got me a cookie, which is a big treat because I like never get cookies. But I was quite anxious coming into my appointment today because a few weeks ago, the doctor's assistant reached out and like booked my appointment instead of one, moved it to 11 for like extra testing, which I just didn't know what that meant or like what was gonna be happening. So I've been a little anxious. So it's nice that I'm like here and I know what the extra testing is. So they were originally gonna do the two extra tests but because of my silver allergy, they would have had to put a string in my eye that was made of silver. I would have a massive reaction to that, so they can't do that. But they said that the last time they did it, which I was very young when they did it, my retina like hardly responded because it was already... What's the word I'm looking for? It didn't have enough reaction. Like it yeah, like react. My, like my there wasn't enough yeah. energy, I guess, or, you know, yeah, my like perception just, yeah. in it to be able to record. Respond. Yeah. So they said reality is like it's not, we're not missing out on test results because with my vision having deteriorated so much more since they last did it, if it hardly picked up then, she said like they'd probably not even get any results. So it's not a huge deal, which is good. So we're going to do the test that she had explained that you guys heard about. And I have like really reactive eyes to light. So I feel like I should do pretty good at this, but we'll see. My eyes right now are obviously like covered in the patches. For those who don't know, I used to wear an eye patch on my left eye to try to straighten my right eye because I had strabismus, which is a lazy eye. It didn't work, so I ended up getting it corrected through surgery. I, I do remember very vividly doing some of these tests as a kid, but I haven't done them in so long. So it should be really interesting to talk to my doctor later to hear some of the results. But my eyes right now, they're numb, so I can't really feel them, but they're like, they don't want to be closed. They're like twitching a lot. I'll show you guys later what they look like when they're dilated. I usually have to wear sunglasses because it's very uncomfortable because I'm already light sensitive and then like even more light pours in and it usually lasts. It slowly goes down over the next 48 hours. It's only really visible for like the first 24 and then the last 24 they look normal but they're definitely still like extra sensitive. What were you saying? There was a time you guys took me mom to like the Toronto Island after. Oh yeah, yeah, we went to Toronto Island. It was kind of silly of us just to make the day really fun. And then we go down to Toronto Island, which is so fun. You just love it. And I it. used to love it as a kid. But your eyes were so sensitive. I think they might have had to put extra drops in and you just couldn't enjoy the day because I don't think we even had little sunglasses for you at that time. I don't know. You know, we're kind of running out the door and all excited about going to the island and then of course we forget things and well and i hardly wore sunglasses as a kid too because i hated it because when yeah. i would put them on it would take away more of my vision 
vision. It wasn't until I had lost enough vision already that I started feeling okay wearing sunglasses because it would just take away sight when I was little. Like if I would put them on, I would see less. It's it so darker. weird, the effect of filming in the dark. <laughs> the camera lens is trying to, it goes in and out trying to search for light. That's looks, like very you, similar you to so what my eye would do. Yes, <laughs> you look so strange when this kind of glow of red light and then the, the camera's like, buzzing in and out. Well, sorry you guys, but it's like a little bit of a horror movie right now. Oh, thanks. Gotta do what we gotta do. I wish they made eye patches in fun bright colors. That would be cute. Yeah. That would have been way more fun. It's they must true. do something now for parents to buy online or there must be right. some. I'm gonna research it and if I find any cool looking eye patches, I'm gonna link it below for parents because kids need to wear patches like I did. Because I used to get made fun of at the park. And then there was another time, it was the, in the 48 hour period that we went to a friend's house for a swimming party and they just got a saltwater pool, like they were all the rage at that time. And everybody was boasting about how you could put your eyes underwater and open them without them stinging because it wasn't chlorine. And so I did it and oh my God, because my eyes were still dilated, the salt water just- Killed you. Oh my God. So like stressful. Screaming. I like ran out. My mom and dad rushed me into the bathroom. They were both trying to like pour water, and like fresh water in my eyes. It was horrible. Oh. I was upset for the rest of the night. My eyes were stinging. Oh, you used to have such a good time at this party that that one was, was not good. Yeah. Many memories. But I do remember vividly having this done where I, dad was rocking me. I, they put the patches on and they gave me like sleeping medicine and dad was like rocking me to put me to sleep for this test. This specific one I'm getting, you can't be asleep for, but the RG that I would have been getting, they can put you to sleep for. It's like the one test you could be asleep for because they're just looking for retinal responses. So they ended up putting me to sleep. And back then they used like a big plastic piece that they put in your eye, not the metal string, which is why I was able to do it back then. But now it's a metal string, which is apparently much more comfortable, but because it's silver, I could not do that. I am out of that first test and waiting for my retina images now. So it'll call me back to just take a scan of my retina so they can see how the deterioration's going, how like each layer of my retina is. So it like literally shows individual layers of the retina. Last time I was here, they said my photoreceptor lens was still like quite intact, which is great. So we'll see how that's doing. If there's been any changes. That test is like very exhausting, the one I just did. I'll definitely need a nap when I go home, but we got through it. It's interesting, my left eye's always been my stronger eye, but I didn't do like as well on my left eye as I thought I would do. Although I have no point of reference, like maybe I did do great, I don't know, but I was like pushing no a lot more than I thought it was going to be on my left eye. It felt like quite equivalent to my right eye, but again, like who knows. It kind of felt like a game. I was like, push, 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 like just pushing all the buttons as you see the lights. Anyways, I'm gonna take off my glasses and show you guys my eyes. I I feel like the freezing drops have come a long way since when I was a kid because when I was a kid your eyes would feel frozen and weird and wonky all day whereas my eyes don't feel that like frozen right now they feel pretty normal but I'm gonna guess they're quite dilated oh yeah oh yeah they're so black <laughs> <laughs> so those, these are my dilated eyes oh gosh it's so bright okay <laughs> I'm gonna put these back on that's what my eyes look like so we're gonna go sit I'm gonna finish the rest of my green tea latte and go get my retinas taken they're getting their like headshots my retinas are getting their school photos today <laughs> I got my doctor a little present, so I got her a candle from a Toronto candle store in lavender to help her relax because she has a very stressful job. And a card that says you are the bee's knees, the beautiful bee on it from like a really fancy card shop. Because you guys know my love of bees. Hello. Hello. So I have this fun little uh, machine in front of me. And what are we doing with this machine? This is an OCT, so it looks at the layers in the retina. Mm -hmm. Fun. So when the physicians look inside your eye with it more similar to another camera we're going to do, but this is going to look a cross-section, produce a cross-section of the layers. So it gives different information than what the physicians can see. So they okay. see the surface. This and sees this each tissue. Underneath. And then are we doing another scan as well? Yeah. Okay. So this is the first one. And how long does this one take? This takes a few minutes. Great. Here we go. And how does that feel? Good. Good. All right. I'm going to take a quick series of photos, so we'll try not to blink for a second. And the image on the left is the image of the surface, and then the image on the right is the cross-section image. So yeah. that's the layer. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three. I'm going to hold your lids tight. Good. So the photos are really useful, especially because you've got the nystagmus. When the physicians look in, it's hard to it's hard for them to understand and appreciate what's going on inside your eyes. Mm -hmm. So the photos become really useful and helpful. Gallop, it's your turn next, babe. <laughs> we gotta get your retinas done. I didn't wear mascara today. That's good. Alright. Alright, so 
I'm going to warn you. It is bright. I'm okay. not going to lie. Okay. But it takes a really nice photo, and usually I only need one. So, so holding really wide open. One, two, three, really wide. Flash. Whew. Wow. <laughs> Look how nice it is. Oh, it's beautiful. Do I have a beautiful eye? It's so, it's such a nice photo. So basically, yeah, over the last, like, like my last appointment was four years ago. And I feel like since then, I've just noticed like general light getting darker. So say like in a room, I can still be like, oh, there is the light. But it's like the overall, especially like overhead lighting in rooms, they used to seem brighter than they do now. And I think for me, like, obviously it used to feel more important to come in and check because my vision was still going. But at this point, like, I feel like my vision is mm -hmm. still so diminished already that I don't really think of it. Like, I don't, I'm not like, oh, I should check in to see if it's gotten worse because mm -hmm. it's like already yeah, of pretty bad. So, but I, I know like I should be checking in on the general health of my eye because yeah, right. I know I'd be at more risk for things like cataracts, but I just exactly. don't think of that because I'm not affected by that every day. Yeah, so we can double check, you know, in case there's anything we can help with like cataract. So we might just take a look. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Just let me know if it's too bright at any point. I was just asking, you know, whether you ever feel scared to come to the eye clinic because you're worried about what we might tell you. I used to be, but yeah, I was saying to my mom earlier, like I would have been more anxious for this appointment if I cared. <laughs> like I've just gotten to a place of being like, this is my life, you know? With... Like I'm comfortable with yeah, it. Like it doesn't, accepted. it doesn't matter to me if the results are bad because mm -hmm. I'm just like, I'm happy as I am. Mm -hmm. So for me now, these are just kind of like, oh, you know, whatever, just going to do a regular thing. It doesn't emotionally impact me anymore, which is good. And that's what I want to help other people get to that place. Yeah, that's great. It was I mean, really cool. We met a fan out that. there. Oh, you met a fan? Yeah. So, that's great. She was so 12 years you. old and has RP. Mm -hmm. So I was like, that's so cool that she like, can watch videos like this, you it's know? It's so nice that you can influence them. But I mean, I don't think the results are bad. There's very little change, if Great. any. We have some slightly different, we've got newer cameras and newer scans now, so it's difficult to directly compare on a very small level, but mm -hmm. things look really similar. Yeah, that makes sense, because I lost most of it in like 2008. That was like the biggest change Drop. for me in, in yeah. vision. I think not focusing so heavily on like, the importance of a cure mm -hmm. because I think that was like very damaging to my psyche being so involved in a cure-based community mm -hmm. when there's no cure. It ends at one for your condition. Yeah. yeah so it was like for me when I lost the majority of my vision at 14 my whole life from diagnosis it would all revolved around like looking for research, research for a cure, one day you could see again, cure, cure, cure. So then when I go blind and there's no cure, it's devastating because you feel like everybody told me if I was cured, my life would essentially be better. And now not only am I not cured, my vision's worse and there's no option for a cure. So that, that was what spiraled me into such a dark place was this idea that like, I am not whole now because there's no cure for if me. If that was your goal, then you failed at that. Yeah. So it took me a long time to get to a place of realizing like I'm not the problem. It's not my fault that I am blind and life wouldn't necessarily be better if I was sighted. Life would be better if the world was made accessible. Mm -hmm. And that's what's important is that the world is not accessible, not that I am blind. So I think that's like the biggest thing with like discussing with parents and stuff is not like putting so much weight into the idea of the I'm cure and the research you. even though i know of course for doctors like that's very interesting and important but for patients if it's not a current option i think it's really harmful to make that of such importance that would be my biggest advice encouraging them to embrace the situation they're in and not put so much hope into a cure that may never happen. So that little Australian voice you might have heard is a fellow who's in from Australia for a year studying under Dr. Eon. And then Dr. Eon's gonna come in in a little bit who you guys have previously met. This guy up in the corner sleeping. He is, isn't he? He's so sleepy. I know my son so well. You're so predictable, Gallo. Apparently on my FFS, that first test I did, I got eight out of 50. <sighs> I don't know what that means, but apparently the normal range is 55 to 65, and I was 8 to 9. A little less than normal. Typical. Molly Burke, a little less than normal. That should be the title of my next book, by the way. Download my book. It's not what it looks like. Linked below. It's an audiobook, so everybody can enjoy it. And if you're deaf, when you buy the audiobook, you can download the PDF file so you can read it too. Bonjour. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> we also brought you a World Sight Day gift. Oh, that's so sweet. For World Sight Day to celebrate. 
It's a nice little candle for you to relax oh, with. Oh, thank you, so I can see in the dark. Yes. I saw you on YouTube with Molly. And you're I, famous like, now. You're welcome. My you're, Molly? Like you're my, famous. My, my little Molly? Like, I've known her since she's like four or five. Very I can't cool. deal with the fame. <laughs> you were famous before me. No, I just no, brought it to the much. next level. I get comments that are like, I go to the same doctor as you. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're eating well? I am, yeah. Taking supplements, eating... No, no smoking and no, no, no. crap. No. No, I find you look pretty good. Good. Yeah. That's, that's great. Pretty, the center of your eye looks surprisingly healthy. To me. That's, that's great. Limit. It's all those carrots I eat, I guess. Keep on but eating. They the really carrot. work. You manage your stress. That's the biggest thing is managing stress. Mm. That's what I'm always working on. I'm very, I'm very busy and with a lot of travels. You know, I always say, work is going to be your best friend. Yeah. Okay. It's always there for you. It'll never go away. And so you need to keep it at arm's length. Yeah. And you need to make sure that you being like super active, super stand, super ambitious, you need to schedule downtime that's, yeah. that cannot be touched. And that's what we've started doing is, you know, like once a month or every six weeks, going away to like a local hotel, doing a staycation for a weekend and just relaxing yeah. by a pool and going to the beach and just like chilling out. You need to schedule an hour or two once a week or a half hour once a day where there's like zero. Okay. Yeah. It's an empty space with just you in it. When I was had that big chunk of vision loss in 2008, 2009, I was so stressed. Mm -hmm. I was like, I just, it was so triggering for me, mm -hmm. but I was so stressed going into the vision loss and that stressed me even more. And it just became such a vicious cycle that I knew from then on, like I had to make full body health mm -hmm. such a priority in my life because it's just, I mean, when one thing's already off in your body, yeah. you know, when you can't see the world, it's mm -hmm. already more stressful. You need to be able to rely on your brain. Yes. And luckily I have Gallup and he's, yeah, he's great. He's, Isn't he? He's, he's a life changer too. Well, your vision may be low, but there's still some function right. in your eyes. You just have less. It's like, it's as if you have few employees. Yeah. Right. A lot of my employees walked out. It yeah. was like a mass exodus. You have the artisan <laughs> bakery versus like the big factory. Got it. So, but I'm sure it's good bread. <laughs> Thank you. I like to think so. And is that mainly tracking like light perception? That... No. This tracks the function of the rods and the cone, okay. but it's on a different scale. Okay. I mean, obviously, like, there's so much variation with RP. Yeah. And there's not, like, a ton, a ton known necessarily. But do you have any idea as to why, say, like, I have that really healthy middle part of my retina, and that's, like, pretty decent results, but yet I have quite severe vision loss? No. And, and some with tulip one have macular edema, others don't. I don't know why. Do I? I don't? No. 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 What would... You've never had it. Okay. What would happen if I did? Or like, can I develop that still? Uh, I don't think... You know what? Usually those who develop it, they develop it earlier in the disease. Like okay. If, usually it's like a package deal. Like okay. They sort of like come with it or not. And what is that? It's like a blister. Okay. In the back of the eye. Okay, Missy. All right. It's good to see you. You too. It's Bye. always good to see you. All right, so we are home. I've got my nice pink Casabella PJs that I'm about to throw on. Got my slippers. I'm going to get a hot water bottle. By the way, if you haven't seen my review, link below. I also will link the coupon code to get a discount below because, oh my god, they're the best. Anyways, this video is not about them. I just, <laughs> I'm about to throw this on and go to sleep because it's only, you know, three in the afternoon, but I am just exhausted from the tests. So my plan is to sleep, then I'm gonna have a nice relaxing bath, have a nice healthy lunch from my favorite vegan restaurant in Toronto called Fresh. And that's kind of the rest of my day. Yes, it's always interesting. Like the older I get, the more and more interesting I find this stuff. I hope you guys found this video interesting. Today, World Sight Day, I uploaded a video about Herbal Essences new tactile shampoo bottles so i'll link that video down below as well because i think it's worth checking out for sure it's so interesting they were saying like all the images they took of my retina there's like one center right there's one spot right in the center of my retina that's still like really healthy the stuff around it is deteriorated but like there's like this one remaining spot in the center they like have no idea why that is and that's what's so fascinating is even within rp tulip one patients 
there can be such diversity in the retina, in the deterioration, in the vision. And I just, you know, like it's okay to be smart explained, there's just still so much unknown. And it's really interesting being like a little living science experiment, mm -hmm. seeing what's going on. Also link that video below in case you guys want to learn about the science behind retinitis pigmentosa, tulip one which is what I've got. That's so many links for you guys to go check out. So I hope you have fun. Thanks for coming with me to my eye appointment and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm. Bye guys.